Thus far, we have described the three basic types of communications that take place on a field bus H1 segment and the role that the Link Active Scheduler, or LAS, plays in these communications. We've also indicated that the LAS has other responsibilities for data link maintenance as well. This may have left you a little foggy on just what these responsibilities are and how and when they are carried out. This information is presented here and includes a logic flow diagram used by the Link Active Scheduler as it executes its scheduling algorithm. Here is a partial list of the tasks performed by the Link Active Scheduler. As you already know, this includes granting permission for scheduled communications and unscheduled communications on the bus. The details of these data transfers were presented previously in this tutorial. Next, we have the data link time synchronization. This must be done to ensure the internal clock of each field and host device is synchronized to within a one millisecond accuracy. The clock in each device is not only used to sync data communications over the bus, but is also key in scheduling activities internal to each device. This includes, for example, the scheduling of function block execution, which we'll discuss later in this tutorial. Next, the Link Active Scheduler must be capable of dynamically identifying new devices as they are placed onto the bus. Once a new device is identified, a configuration tool can be used for automatic address assignment and control configuration. This is done without hardware dip switch or jumper settings. All hardware and software settings are made over the bus using client server type data communications. Thus, we have a true plug-and-play type operation. So let's take a look at how the LAS determines what is done on the bus and when. It must satisfy all needs for deterministic execution of process control algorithms and at the same time achieve some semblance of order and sharing of bus resources among all devices. This is as much a mouthful as it is a tall order for the Link Active Scheduler. This flow diagram for LAS operation shows two logical branches from the starting point, one for high priority scheduled communications and the other for lower priority unscheduled communications. In executing its algorithm, the LAS first tests to see if there is sufficient time available to carry out other bus activity before the next scheduled communication. If there is insufficient time, the LAS waits until the next deterministic data transfer comes due. Depending on the duration of this waiting period, the LAS may issue one or more idle messages indicating that the bus has been idled. This is necessary to ensure other devices on the bus don't mistakenly assume the LAS has failed and is no longer scheduling communications. Then, at precisely the right time, the LAS issues a Compel Data, or CD, that triggers the scheduled data transfer. The algorithm then repeats again from the starting point. When time is available for other activity before the next scheduled communication, the LAS will accommodate one of three different communications. These include passing the token with a PT message granting a device permission for unscheduled communications, issuing a time distribution using the TD message, to synchronize all data link clocks on the segment, or issuing what is called a probe node or PN message to determine if new devices have been added to the bus. This algorithm is repeated indefinitely so that all devices are given an equal opportunity for bus access. In subsequent slides, we'll discuss some details regarding the time distribution and probe node messages. We'll also briefly discuss how the Link Active Scheduler is made redundant.